I remember a time when I didn't have to wear this cloak. Granted, I couldn't look in the mirror without puking with what these eternal flames have contorted me into. I saw it coming. I just didn't see it, you know? It was apparent, but in disguise. Like some of the villains in those horror movies on TV. It was too late when the fire had spread into my room. I was asleep, and the door was blocked by the flames. <laughs> I screamed out, but no one responded. So I broke my window and jumped out of that three-story high room that I called home. I realized then, and then only that I was on fire, burning. I rolled and shrieked, but to no avail. And I saw them, those people who looked at me funny when I walked out of my apartment, those people who considered me a faggot for writing books and short stories or calling me a disgrace to my family for having a degree in Latin but not taking a good job at a university. There was a time when I could have considered them friends. Not anymore though. They've changed. Like a body burnt by fire. Once it's scarred there's no healing it. Thus, like a phoenix, fire has given me life when death was at its closest. I don't remember my visit to the hospital. What I do remember is that no one from my immediate family showed up. There was a nurse in there who I got to know, though. I felt really sorry for her. I, of all people, I felt sorry. She was my age round 27, and had always been cheated on by anyone she dated. People labeled her for being a slut or a pothead because of what she wore. But she was so nice. I really did pity her. We did talk occasionally. I returned home covered in bandages after three months. I had to be escorted by the police considering that my apartment had been all but destroyed by, assumedly, by next-door neighbors. <laughs> Charges were impressed because, well, not enough evidence had been found to confirm the defendants were guilty. It's a fucking shame. All this could have been prevented if they had only gotten a ten-year sentence. So I don't pity them. Before I could take matters into my own hands... I saw myself in the mirror for the first time in months. I was hideously deformed. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I fashioned a black cloak, a disguise of sorts, out of a trench coat, and made a face mask from what my grandmother taught me when I was a child. Her pride came from her sewing skills, and. Nothing would be accepted on holidays or birthdays by her unless accompanied by something one of her grandchildren, the three of us that there were, had sewn for her. My father ran a butcher shop where I worked, and I was the only grandchild who had the patience to even attempt to sew. My first target was that redneck hick fuck. Randy. He was always pretending to be the macho man and had the self-image that he was the strongest motherfucker around. He had been my friend in senior high, but he criticized me for being alone instead of going to parties and living the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle. I used this to my advantage. The dumbass came home drunk one night and forgot to lock up his doors. First mistake. He also came back with that chick, Alice. And I swear, she dated every single guy in the school. Fucking attention whore. No wonder she was dating a scumbag shit like Randy. Anyway, I waited until I stopped hearing the bed rock outside. And I silently entered the door. The apartment complex was fairly new. So the floor never creaked unless a fat ass fuck like Randy walked on it. Randy, like I said earlier, was the first. He had gotten up to use the bathroom. Lucky me. <laughs> I walked 
imitating the typical slutty walk that Alice walked in, and I just knocked ever so softly on the door. Come on in, babe. He moaned as I creaked the door open. I jumped at him with a pillow and muffled his shit-talking mouth. He soon fell to the taste of electrical tape. Quietly, I whispered, ever so satisfied. Remember me, big boy? Society burned my ass to a crisp, and I was reborn within the flames like a phoenix. He struggled to get free, but I had already tied his hands with steel cable. So you thought it was cool to pick on the smart kid, the little kid, the weak kid. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Savage. All those girls only liked you out of fear. And when you betrayed them for some other bitch, they didn't even care. They loathed your miserable fucking existence. I slipped my needles, of which I had around a hundred thread dagger out of the homemade pockets I fashioned and stuck each needle into his legs and into his filthy genitalia. He tried to scream, but I opened his face until he was silent, but still conscious. I wanted him to know this pain. I threaded each of the needles onto the same thread and pulled them out all at the same time, resulting in a sound comparable to that that a dying cat would make, but much quieter. At the same time, he tried to get free, <laughs> but to no avail. I saw that he tried to kick me, so I dodged it easily. They never learn, do they? Well, in that case, I said as I reached for my knife and slowly cut a large gash down his right leg. We'll have to use some inspired punishment. I then skinned his leg with him fidgeting like a fish out of the water. <laughs> Child, it'll be okay. There's no need to be upset. You knew this would happen eventually. I started to cut the tendons and muscles and such from his bones. I heard to my pure delight Pain resonating from his muffled voice. <laughs> Easy there, this isn't that bad. I mean, compared to being lit on fire. I know that you were at a gas station down the road. Is that where you got that lighter fluid you used to set my room ablaze? <laughs> his bones were completely exposed. Much to my pleasure. I'll be back in a minute, kiddo gonna go get acquainted with your lady friend. <laughs> I exited the bathroom, moving a cabinet to block the door off and keep that fucker in. Even if he could try, he'd get nowhere in his quest to freedom. I slowly made my way over to that whore, and I silently tied her hands and legs with the steel cable, and I taped over her mouth as well. She wasn't awake, so I filled a bucket up of Randy's blood of what was left from his leg and threw it at her. Alarmed. She tried to scream, but nothing but silence came from the bed. She wrestled with the wire like a crazed maniac. I then whispered, tauntingly. Looks like your trip to Wonderland has turned into a hiatus from hell. Remember when we were walking down the road back in your junior year? Remember how we held hands and then you betrayed me and ran off with some jock piece of shit? No? Well, I do. Very clearly. I then pulled more needle and thread from my pockets. You know, if there's one thing that absolutely must be done, it's this. 
I stripped off her nightgown and sewed her loose STD infested vagina closed, she screamed in what I could only assume was the pain of her fucking life. Shh, 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 shh. I did you a favor. You don't have to worry about buying any more birth control pills, and you don't have to deal with that period blood running down your cum-stained clothing, you slut. She squirmed as I reached for my knife. The blade was tainted from the blood of the fat pig in the bathroom, so I decided to take my time and find a dish rag to wash it off. I also started to work my way into Alice's mind, carving into the bedpost to make it into a spear. Ever since I was a child, I worked in a butcher shop for my father, you know. One day, several men walked in and held the shop up. I walked behind them and forced them to the ground, slowly but surely, skinning them all alive. My father covered it up for me, saying that the steamer had boiled them alive. He knew I was only trying to help. But she attempted to jump off the bed in a desperate attempt to escape in the midst of my talking. She got to her feet and I tripped her clumsy fuck. Her chest impaled the makeshift spear. I left her there. And I could see her lungs as they expanded. The spear punctured her one lung and came out the other side. I thought you liked being penetrated. Yes, I thought wrong. I shoved pieces of the post that chipped off in her eyeballs, and it was such a glorious sight. Those deceiving green eyes being mutilated into a bush, undistinguishable from welted white chocolate. She slumped over. Whether unconscious or dead, I didn't care. She wasn't gonna wake from this. Now, to deal with Randy again. I slowly removed the cabinet from in front of the door. Randy had hoisted himself into the bathtub and was running cold water onto his wounds. I picked him up and threw him at the toilet. It cracked as his forehead violently hit the side of it. Remember when you did that to me in eighth grade? I had to go to the hospital because of you, jackass. The ceramic had stuck into his head, making him a laughable, pathetic sight. Tears began to well up in his eyes. Tears of fear. Fear of death. Oh, what's wrong? Is Will Wendy gonna cry? So Wendy's a cry baby. Wendy's a cry baby. I skipped around him singing. I laughed at him some more before deciding that the ceramics in his face were just starting to annoy me. You know, Randy, your face has always been pretty fucking annoying. How about we fix that? Just you. And me. I pulled out that knife of mine. And, dear old Morse, I started to cut the skin on the back of his head into two pieces. I did this until I ended up back at his chin, cutting the tape in the process. I'd already blown out his voice box, so his screams were blissfully silent. You can't say anything. Just like those kids you bullied. And those girls you cheated on. I then proceeded to rip and tear his hair and skin from his skull. What could have been a scream was again silence. <laughs> I then said, Enough of you, and 
slit his throat. The smell of blood filled my nose. <sighs> And my job was complete. I walked out of the apartment, subtly, clean, and unseen, just as I had entered, which was a relief. I locked the door, knowing that only Randy and the landlord owned keys, and the landlord well, he didn't give two shits about Randy. He never paid his rent on time. So I gave him a timely eviction. I returned home to change back into bandages, which I considered to be my disguise. After all, what damage could someone warped and destroyed by fire cause? <laughs>